What's cracking, YouTube? Welcome back to the Big Dogs Gotta Eat Fantasy Football channel. As always, it's your boy, Nick. Doing a video a little different than I've normally been doing. I was refreshing my Chiefs team outlook, and I haven't been inside it since I wrote it, so I had a lot of stuff on Jeremy Macklin, had to wipe that out and kind of redo my whole Tyreek Hill paragraph or whole Tyreek Hill analysis. And as I'm doing it, I realized I had a lot to write there. So I figured this is like a questionable player that a lot of people are kind of on the fence about. They don't know whether to draft them, they don't know whether to leave them. So I'm like, yeah, why not just get an individual video about Tyreek Hill, and I think this will help you decide whether or not you want to draft him. It's going to be a nice and quick video. Make sure you give it a thumbs up if you liked it, and uh, uh, we'll get right into it. All right, so 2016, we saw Tyreek Hill absolutely kind of blow up the NFL, right? Just blow up the scene. He was a fifth round pick out of the small school, West Alabama. And he dropped to the fifth round, not because of him as a player, not because of his skill set, but he was dealing with some off the field issues that really plummeted him down the draft board. And last year, his talent overcame his off the field issues, clearly. So last season, he was a 22 year old rookie, finished as wide receiver 15 in standard scoring, despite being the 55th most targeted wide out. He had 83 targets. Hill's already one of the most electric, like dynamite all around playmakers in the NFL after one season. He had a receiving line of 61 catches, 593 yards, and six touchdowns. He added 267 rushing yards and three scores on the ground, as well as obviously his punt and kick returns, which he added a few more touchdowns via special teams. Just a truly electric player. And what's crazy is he only averaged 26 snaps a game last year. I think the first point to be made up here is something that people will definitely overlook and it's how heavily utilized Tyree Kill was down by the end zone. He actually tied Travis Kelsey for the team lead in targets inside the 10 yard line. They both had seven and Hill was more efficient. He converted four of the seven targets inside the 10 yard line into touchdowns. Tells me one of two things. Tells me A, Tyree Kill is really, 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 really good in small spaces, really good at getting, getting open in tight coverage. Thus, he was open in the end zone and the quarterback wanted to throw him the ball there. Reminds me of a similar situation to a guy named Antonio Brown. Really good in those tight areas, why you see him getting a lot of red zone targets, a lot of targets inside the 10. Or two, could mean that he was part of the game plan that the Chiefs had going in near that part of the end zone. I'll probably lean towards option one. Either way, it's really good for future success because if you see those targets consistently, those always almost correlate into good fantasy points and good fantasy production. You also have to look at the games that Jeremy Macklin played in, the games that he didn't play in, because this year, obviously, Hill will be playing without Macklin. Macklin missed four games last year. I want you to take a look at these stats. You look at in split, there are the games that he played with Macklin, out of split, the games that he played while Macklin was out. And you could just see how much better he was without Macklin. His receptions went from under three to seven. Targets went from four to eight and a half. Like everything just increased, like way more fantasy points per game, way more, all just so much more production, right? And that's with him being that number one wide out there. And I think you can expect numbers like this next season with Macklin being gone. The question obviously becomes, you know, at his size, he's 5'10", about 180 pounds. Can he really handle the workload as a number one receiver on the outside? You don't see a lot of guys his size have success, especially with a big workload. What do the Chiefs think? Andy Reid certainly thinks so. He already came out, say that he is our clear-cut number one as soon as Jeremy Macklin was released. So he has the vote of confidence from the head coach, which is always a good thing. And Matt Harmon, who's a great fantasy analyst who does the reception perception, charting specific wide receivers, following their individual routes uh, over a few different games, also thinks that Terry Kill is a dominant receiver in terms of running his routes, getting separation. I'm gonna put up Terry Kill's reception perception on the screen right now. You can see the success rate versus coverage on all of these routes. You see that except for the corner route, which I'm guessing that's a very tough route to run and, and succeed on, right? So I'm guessing that's probably a lower score across the board. But every other single route he ran, he had a lot of success. Post, dig, curl, slant, like all routes that number one receivers would need to run and, and utilize, right? And you look at this next chart, which is from next gen, the NFL next gen stats. Can Terry Kill run all these different routes? Can he do them successfully? You look at one of his uh, bigger volume games in terms of receiving last year, right? He went 10 for 89. He was at Carolina. 
you see him running absolutely all over the field, right? You see him running slants over the middle, outs, ups, cuts, all this kind of stuff, right? And he succeeded in running every single one of those routes. The gray, the gray routes are the ones that were incomplete passes, whether it have been bad passes or overthrows or, or maybe him dropping the ball. It doesn't really matter. What you, what you do see is, though, all three of those were on deeper routes, right? They're like fades, and that's not something that Alex Smith does often anyways. He keeps it obviously within like 20 yards, usually passing the ball. So as long as you can succeed on those depth of throws that aren't very far, you know, you're going to fit in in this offense. That was NFL Next Gen Stats. Another NFL Next Gen Stat that you need to know, going back to why I think he was so successful in the end zone and the red zone area is he was the NFL's number one wide receiver in terms of separation, averaging 3.12 yards of separation from his defender per target. That is a lot of room. Do you understand how big three yards is? He was number one in the NFL on that. He ran 50% of his, 57% of his routes on the outside last year. So he has a good amount of experience and a good amount of work already on the outside, proving that he can do it. He had an 80% contested catch rate last year against contested targets. He ranks in the 94th percentile in burst score, agility score, and catch radius. And the catch radius is a big, big thing for him. If you're going to be number one wideout, especially if you're a smaller player, you need to have those long, athletic, lean arms, right? Because if you're not going to be able to beat defenders using your height, you're going to need to have long arms. Elite speed, 4'3", 4'40", like incredible speed. So all these things, you know, add up to him having a dynamite season. He's already been called the number one wide out there by the head coach. You see how well he separates from defenders. You see that he could run every single route in the route tree really well in the end zone near that area where he needs to be able to separate from defenders. He's targeted as much as Travis Kelsey. Like that's crazy to me. The only real knock that analysts have against Hill is his size. Like this is the best argument that I've heard so far that I've seen so far this summer. Since 1997, only 20 wide receivers weighing 185 pounds or less have surpassed 1,000 receiving yards. It's an absurd stat. I don't know how you even find that, but that's like literally that's the best argument I've heard against Hill. So, I mean, I, I guess if you don't think, if you think the size is going to play a huge role, then I guess you're going to be off Hill. If you for some reason just think he's going to be, he's going to wear down, you think he's going to get injured, that's the really only argument that you have. And it's not, it's more than, it's more just like, throw it against the wall and see if it sticks. It's not actually logic. He's not going to be returning kicks and punts. He's going to be off special teams, which I guess caps his value a little bit considering he scored multiple touchdowns last year and it gives you points obviously in fantasy. But I think that's more of a vote of confidence from the team saying they're taking him off special teams because they want to give him a much bigger workload, right? You don't want your, your number one wide out returning kicks and shit. He's going to get tired, stamina, all that kind of stuff. So I see that as a vote of confidence. Right now he's going 43rd overall. So fifth round, 10 team league, fourth round in a 12 team league wide receiver 22 when you look at his ceiling his ceiling is easily top 12 if not top 10 if not top 8 uh, I've realized that I've done a bunch of drafts and I, I don't own any of him I don't own any Tyree Kill on my teams up to this point but I certainly am going to after reanalyzing and writing this section of this article so I am growing on Tyree Kill a lot and I hope the analysis I just gave you and what I just said to you makes sense to you guys because he's someone that you shouldn't just pass by because you have worries of him not being big enough to get those looks and even if for some reason like Chris Conley or Albert Wilson came in and took over the number one role he'll played only 26 percent of the snaps so even if he increases that to like 50 percent and he's the number two his usage is still going to be way higher than last year and he could still put up really good numbers so that's my thoughts on Tyreek Hill I hope this was helpful if it was scroll down a little bit give it the thumbers up Subscribe to the channel if you're new. Plenty more analysis coming for the rest of the season leading up to your drafts and throughout the season. So stick around with me, baby, and I'll see you guys next time.